Okay, what's going on? So, uh, um, I'm looking around my workshop and it's basically all set up. There's all the, I spent, I don't know, however long, probably a good six, seven months organizing everything. I mean, I've done other things, but a lot of what I've spent uh, my time doing is organizing. So uh, there's the French cleats behind me for all my tools. There's this workbench that has already um, been great to use. There's all the paint storage. I have the small parts storage. There's the office behind you where I do all my editing. So there's not a whole lot left to organize. It's it's pretty much there. I mean, there are still some things left to do. I, dust collection is like the one big thing that I have left to do in here. But what good is a workshop unless you're gonna use it for, to build stuff? I mean, I can't just keep building workbenches over and over again. That's that would be weird. I can't, I'm not going to fill the space with workbenches. I have a big space over here that I'm uh, excited to start using for some bigger projects. That's what I want to do. I want to get back into building Marvel machines. So if, you, if you've been following me for a long time, for a couple years now, I used to build um, Marvel machines. I've built the big uh, Marvel Mountain. Hopefully you've seen that video. I've also built uh, some smaller marble machines, but I want to get back to building more of those. I <laughs> I have the two-player pinball machine that if you, for anyone that's been bugging me about that thing, I am going to finish it. I, uh, I'm actually going to start painting it. Um, I, I painted it a long time ago. Started painting it a long time ago. I'm going to get back to painting it um, relatively soon. So that'll be something you'll start seeing more of that, um, soon, but I do want to get back to building, um, marble machines in general. So the hardest thing about a marble machine is the lift, getting marbles to go downhill from the top to the bottom piece of cake. That's easy, but getting them to go from the bottom all the way to the top. That's the difficult part. That's challenging. Um, there's lifts are so finicky. There's there's so many things that have to go into them Like back when I built Marble Mountain the lift was the first thing that fell apart for that um, The motor I, I mean I did a pretty terrible att I attempted to build a lift for it, but it didn't go over so well It started falling apart the gears were grinding. It wasn't well lined up That was part of the reason why Marble Mountain doesn't exist anymore was the lift I mean, I probably could have tried to build another lift, but Either way, it was time to, it was done. I know that um, Martin over at Wintergarten has um, had, he's had a lot of issues with his lifts as well. Um, so I, I, I understand it, I get it, because I am going through the same thing, or I have gone through the same thing. So I want to build a universal marble lift, something that is standalone, its own, it's its own thing, and there's a lot of aspects to it that I'll go over in a second, but I want it to have, I want it to be its own thing, so that way I don't have to build lifts anymore. I just have one one good lift that I can use for all of my other marble machine, all of my marble machines. So I basically will have that as the lift and then I can build, I can just spend all my time building the downhill portions. There's a lot of aspects to it that I want to include. I want it to be quiet. That's key because having a marble lift that's just like is churning and making a lot of noise and stuff that kind of takes away from the other portion, which is the sound of the marbles going downhill. I want it to be high capacity. So I want it to be able to lift a lot of marbles kind of at the same time. But then I also want it to be adjustable. I want to um, have it be so I can lift, I don't know, let's say a hundred marbles per minute um, all the way down to, I can adjust it. So it could be, I don't know, 200 marbles per minute um, or, or 30 marbles per minute. I, you know, I just want it to be adjustable so that way I can lift Depending on the machine that I'm building, um, I could adjust however many marbles that I'm uh, churning through it at the same time. And then I also want it to be capable of handling different sized marbles. I generally use half inch um, steel ball bearings. That's kind of the main thing that I, the main kind of marble that I use. But I want there to be a range so that way I could do anywhere down to like maybe three eighths of an inch all the way to about an inch um, marble. So that's something I have to keep in mind as well. Now, when this lift is good to go, if ho hopefully I can make it good to go, I want to, um, there's just this ongoing list on my phone of different marble machines that I want to build. Whenever I have an idea, I add it to the list on my phone and that list is just getting longer and longer. So one of the things I wanna do is I wanna start doing challenges uh, for marble machines. So, um, uh, I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna involve patrons, um, on Patreon. I'll put out different ideas or ask for challenges through Patreon and those that are on the site will, um, 
be able to vote or just put input on on what I end up doing. Um, so that'll be that'll be kind of fun. And then something <laughs> something that I, I'm really excited about this. Something that I want to do is I want to create a marble machine for every state in the United States. So there'll be a marble machine for California, for North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, uh, Maine, Florida, ev literally every state. Um, and it'll be big. So each state will be the size of a, a, a full sheet of plywood. Um, and in that, I'll include the geography, the topography, landmarks, bridges, roads, cool places to see, and hopefully I can get input from people that live in those states or know about those states. That way I'm not missing anything and there's just like, you know, I can include all those cool things in each state. There's no plan to like connect all of them. That would be too difficult, but uh, it would just be cool to have um, a marble machine for each state, but I can't do that that series of projects or any of the other ideas that I have until I have this um, universal marble lift. So I've been asked about how I come up, how the, I've been asked with how I come up with my ideas, how I design, how I create, you know, how I plan out what I'm gonna do. I don't use any software. I've used SketchUp a couple times, but I don't, I generally don't use it. Um, I don't use like Fusion, Fusion 360, I don't use CAD, I don't use any of those kind of design softwares. I just use good old pen and paper. Um, that's it, I sketch books. Um, and I actually like using pen a lot better than pencil because one, you just, you can't go back. You just have to keep going. Um, you can kind of scribble out maybe something, but generally you just have to keep going with what you're doing. And the other reason I like to use pen is because pencil fades over time. So in an old sketchbook, I can't really go back. I mean, I could go back and look at my idea, my old sketches, but they fade over time. So um, with pen, they don't. I can always go back, um, let's see what's this one. I can look at some of my old ideas, even if they were just a concept, they're all, they're all in here. Like this is from the, the barn doors that I built, the big workshop barn doors. Yeah, barn doors, a lot of barn door sketches uh, in this book. Um, so I like looking back at my old designs because, I don't know, it's just kind of cool and I can see where, what, you know, what I was thinking at the time. So it's just good old pen and paper. So if, so if you're interested in how I'm, I mean, I'm going to design this thing. I'm going to design this lift. That's what this video is. I'm going to design the lift. Um, so actually I'm going to have my GoPro overhead. Hello. Um, so you can follow along as I, uh, as I sketch this thing. Let's do it. So we have our good old pen and paper. So yeah, so let's write down the things that um, I have to keep in mind. So I want it to be quiet. I want it to be a high capacity. I want it to be adjustable. Um, different sized marbles. So yeah, those are like the main, um, the main things that I want to keep in mind. Um, so kind of all the, all the design elements are gonna um, hopefully keep all these things um, in mind. Okay, so let's design it from, let's do a side view. view. Now, I've already been like thinking about this in, uh, in my head. So I kind of already have a good idea of what I want to do, but this is sketching it out is what really helps uh, work out any kind of kinks or details, or this is how I kind of create a materials list. So I'm not sure exactly on the, the sizes and how tall I want it to be, but I do want it to kind of go up at an angle. So I want it to go up at an angle, but when the marbles go on to the lift, it'll be a little difficult to get them on at this angle. So I'm gonna have them go at, it won't be quite straight, this will be straight down, but I want them to get on at like a slight angle like that. So there'll be another, there'll be a roller here, a roller here, and then another roller here, but this will be the bottom one. So this is the one that'll have the motor. And then it'll go around like this. And then at the top, they'll get dumped off here. The thing about having, so this would be like a big conveyor belt. Now having something like this, um, it's hard to get that tension. So this, this right here, this is, has to be rigid. And this will be rigid too, because it'll be a locked off top point. Um, so I need to create, I need to be able to have the ability to create tension in this, in this thing. Um, and the only way to do that is having a fourth roller. So ideally it would kind of go like this, but then I'll have a 
fourth roller here so that way it comes around and I'll put the fourth roller on here but then pull it this way to create that tension um, in the especially in these portions here um, so if I have a roller here a roller there a roller there I need to create a frame um, I'll probably just create this out of wood because that's the easiest uh, just like a two by four kind of frame. So two by four down, two by four down. I did get some bearings, uh, some some ball bearings um, that are half inch. So that's I have eight. So it'd be one for each side, basically, um, for each roller. So two, four, six, eight. Maybe I could do two by four here at an angle, bottom plate, and then so 2x4, 2x4, 2x4-ish, and here. So there's different ways that I could do tension. I could do it kind of manually with like wing nuts, or I could do it with, um, I could do it with like, ten, um, what are they called? Those, those things that have hooks on either end with like a, a turn, oh, a turnbuckle, the turnbuckle. So I could have a turnbuckle here that, I mean, the roller could be anywhere really. It could be all the way down here, it could be up here. Um, but anywhere that I could have like a turn, a turnbuckle that basically has a thing that you turn it and it tightens this. So I can do that. I, Oh, the only thing is I want it, I mean, it'll be kind of rigid because of the tension, but because tension is good, but I don't, you know, I, I don't want it too tight. I do want it adjustable, so I'll try to, maybe, I'll try a turnbuckle. I'll probably have to try different things on this whole thing. You know, this is all a work in progress. But I'll try it with the turnbuckle. So I could try something maybe with like wing nuts. So I could pull the two by fours down and then tighten them. We'll try that. We'll try different ways. Okay, so there's that. So we have our frame, kind of. Um, but this is unstable, so we need some kind of like uh, maybe the two by four would be like here. You have one there, and I'll have a second one here. Marbles go off and go that way. With our frame, then we need some stability, and the best way to do stability is with uh, side panels. So I could do a, I could do a sheet of piece of plywood for the corner here. Oh, maybe I could do here, there. This is one full piece. I mean, it doesn't necessarily, the side would be kind of cool, but, um, okay, so there's that. Um, so let's re, so we have our frame, have our bearing. This is all not to scale. This is just general. Turnbuckle. So that'll be like a plywood piece on either side that keeps it from, keeps the frame from going um, kind of wobbly. Um, and then we have our, sorry. Um, so let's take a closer look at the, at the entrance points. So at this entrance point, we have the two rollers and the marbles Okay, so the marbles will come in. They obviously have to come in at a slight angle. So if this is flat, they come in at a slight angle. Um, now, the way I wanna have the holders for the marbles on the lift is kinda create these shelves. So I think I wanna use like a metal piece as the backer, a very thin metal piece. Um, and then create like a, and then attach like a wooden square to it. So basically it's like, um, so it's like this middle piece, oh shoot. it's like a metal piece and then a wooden square. Um, and so then this void right here is where the marble will sit. It'll sit right there. And I'll attach this metal piece to the, to the conveyor belt at the top ish, middle, middle to top. 
somewhere there. So the marble will go on. It'll when they so they'll line up here and they'll roll onto the lift. And because of this metal the the wooden box here, when the lift goes up more, the marbles will just stop, get held there. They'll they'll stop and wait for the next one. So the next one will be below it. Like there. Um, now the tricky part is making sure that when they, when this opening happens, that marbles can't just go down and away. They can't slip underneath it. So I'll have to create some kind of wall here that goes down a little bit and funnels away. That way, um, these guys will go in and there's no way that the marble can, can shimmy down um, and sneak through. So when this opening happens, basically the marbles will go into the void and it'll just kind of keep lifting up. So that way marbles will just go, you know, they'll just, the only option that they have to go is up. And then, so yeah, it'll, it'll, the, this wall on the entry point will have to shimmy away. That way when the things come up, they don't get pinched or um, get stuck against this thing or get caught. Because if there's a hard edge here and one of the boxes comes up and just hits it, then it'll break or something bad will just happen. So if I have this fan away, that'll be ideal. Okay, so we'll have to incorporate that. And then the exit point, the, the exit point is gonna be tricky because hopefully it's, oh, let's see, so when they, when they flip over, the marbles hopefully I mean, the, so the pulley ideally will go a little bit further and then the conveyor belt will come back a little bit, um, depending on where this tensioned raw, uh, pull, uh, roller is, they'll hopefully want to come back a little bit. And that will mean that the marbles want to drop straight down or forward more. Um, so I'll be able to put some kind of catch thing here that will collect them um, as they pop off the lift. And then I can lead them to the marble machine or wherever they want to go or wherever they're supposed to go. Okay, uh, so the, the, hard, the hardest thing that I think is gonna be to, for some of this aspects so far, is attaching the holder of the, the shelf for the marbles to the conveyor. So I got some neoprene that is an eighth of an inch thick. I don't know of any good way to attach things to the neoprene. So one of the things that I want to try to do is use rivets. I don't have any guarantee that this is going to work, but basically the, the rivets have this kind of a washer thing. So if I punch a small hole in the neoprene, this um, little washer thing at the end, this will go on the back side of the neoprene and stick through. So stick through the neoprene and then stick through the metal. And then when I tighten this, it expands the end here, um, which will then get stuck on the metal of the holder of the shelf thing. Um, and hopefully that will keep the holder attached to the neoprene. I may have to add some, some sort of like extra washer here because I don't know if this will just kind of want to get pushed through the neoprene as well. I'm not sure. We'll have to try a couple different things. Um, but that's where I'm at so far with that. Again, no guarantees that it's gonna work, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so now let's look at it from the front. So from the front, um, we have our conveyor. If this is the entrance, so this is where the marbles are lining up, waiting to go on the shelf. Um, I don't know how wide I want this to be yet. Um, but I do want to have high capacity, so if it's, I'm thinking maybe like 14 inches wide or 16 inches wide, that would be potentially 30, 30, if you know, if it's 16 inches wide and I can put half inch marbles through it, it's probably around 30, you know, feasibly it would be 32. But if it's 16 inches wide, it would be maybe, um, maybe 30 marbles at a time for each shelf. Um, so that would be that would be a lot. That would be a lot of marbles. Now, as the marbles go up, if I have you know 
30 marbles going into time. That's a, that's, that would be a lot. That almost might be too much. Um, so I do want an adjustable. So if this is where the marbles are coming in on the ramp to go to the lift, um, if I kind of, if I cut this off, so that way marbles can only get on from this portion, that will change the capacity of it because instead of having an entire row of marbles getting on it, it's just a hand or a, you know, a few. So that's how I, I'm planning on changing the capacity, having this kind of a, a, a shimmy. So the marbles will shimmy into a smaller, um, smaller area as they enter into the lift. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm doing that. Different sized, different sized marbles. Okay, so again, as the marbles will go onto the lift, there's this box here. Now the size of the box and the size of this gap will definitely determine how many marbles can go on it. So if it's an inch by an inch box, or maybe an inch by longer, I'm, you know, I'm not sure yet. If I make it this distance, so if here's the metal piece and the box that they sit on. So if this is an inch, then a half inch marble will sit there in the there's potentially a, an ability for another row of marbles. That might be too much. Maybe I'll drop it down to, so let's see if I want it. So I want to be able to have anywhere from three eighths marble to an inch, right? Now the center of an inch marble will be at a half. It needs to be able to sit here, but it needs a little more, more than that. So maybe five eighths or, oh, I'll do three quarters, so three quarters. So this won't be an inch, this will be three quarters. That way I can get an entire one inch marble onto it and it won't wanna fall off, it'll wanna stay on the lift. So if it's three quarters, then I'll be able to fit, a th and I'll definitely be able to fit a three eighths marble. The only thing is I wonder if it two three eighths marbles will wanna get onto it, especially because if they are getting on it like that, they could stagger a bit and potentially fit more. I mean, it's not bad, it's just, it, it might be too busy. Um, but that's something we'll just have to try out. I actually don't have three eighths inch marbles and I don't plan on using them very often. So, um, I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. Uh, all right. So we have our height capacity. We have our adjustable, we have different size marbles. Now getting them to be quiet, is going to be, that's going to be tricky. I still have the motor that I use for marble mountain. Um, actually here it is right here. Oh, it's here. This is it. It's it's big and it's bulky, but it's pretty quiet. Actually, here, let me turn it on. It works still. So it's pretty quiet. I mean, it makes some noise, but it's relatively, I don't know, quiet is uh, subjective. So, or ob objective. Anyway, it is, it does make noise, but I think if I put it in a, um, I think if I put it in like a box, it won't make too much noise. But, okay, so it does spin at, what is it? 1725 RPM. So it's, it's fast. Um, that's obviously way too fast for, uh, for this thing because it just, there, it just would, uh, it wouldn't work. Um, so I need to reduce that. And so I got this, gear reducer. This is a 60 to one gear reducer. It's a, I think it's a warm gear. Um, but anyway, the, the motor will be attached through this, um, hole. And as this spins 60 times, this spins one time. So it'll take the 1725 and basically bring it down to 30 RPM. Is that right? So we have 1725 divided by 60. Yeah, 28, almost 29 RPM. So a lot slower. Um, so basically one, it'll be run, one rotation every two seconds. So 1,000, uh, 1,000, 1, 1,002, 1, 1,003, 1,004. So I, I think that's gonna be a good speed. Um, 
I won't know until I actually hook this thing up to the motor and test it, which I'm not doing right now, but that's all adjustable down the road. So quiet, we needed it to be quiet. I don't, I don't know how quiet this is yet. I won't know um, for a little bit because I can't hook this up yet and test it. But um, presumably that's gonna be relatively quiet. Um, and if not, I'll hopefully, I'll, I'll create some kind of casing to put them inside. Um, so hopefully that will muffle any noise that they do create. Obviously marbles getting on the lift will create some noise. Um, but I might try to put some kind of like soft squishy thing um, around the L that they sit inside. So when they clink into it, they don't make a whole lot of noise. Um, it's relatively quiet. So that hopefully, I'll try that, maybe tape, I'm not sure. We'll try different things to basically dampen the noise. So that way the lift is not what creates the noise the marble machine that the marbles are rolling down is what creates the noise. So I got some bearings. The bearings are quiet with the neoprene rolling on the on some kind of roller. That will be quiet. The only thing is if the, the connection here between the neoprene and the holder, if there's a little metal piece, that might be a little loud. So I'm planning on using PVC for uh, the rollers. So I'll use a half inch metal rod that goes through so it'll be a half inch rod that goes through a bearing on either side. Um, and then there's the roller. And I think I'm gonna use either three inch or four inch PVC for this roller. And then for, um, I'm gonna create, oh, this, is, this is bad, let's move this over here. We have half inch. We have our bearing on one side, our bearing on the other. This is not to scale. We have our four inch PVC thing. Now, in order to keep the neoprene on the track as it goes in, there needs to be like a barrier, some kind of thing that extends. So if it's four inch, there's something that extends bigger than that on either side um, of the roller. That way it keeps the neoprene in line and it doesn't sway off the roller either way. Um, so I'll use some kind of like bigger wooden circle for that. I'll basically plug the, the, um, the PVC into that. And then at this end, I'll create another thing that's called a, oh, what's it called? Editor Ben here. Um, it's called a shaft collar. Okay, as you were. It has something where I can either put a set screw, um, or I can put something all the way through, probably just a set screw, but basically it'll keep the roller, the PVC attached to the pipe, so that way they all, they all spin together. Um, so the only friction in it, in this entire thing, is the neoprene on the PVC, which I might even put some neoprene around the PVC, the PVC so that way that's, um, that's quiet as well, or some kind of soft material, um, or some kind of dampening material on the PVC. And then the only other friction is the, um, the bearing, which is quiet. So the bearings will be quiet, everything rolling on the bearings will be quiet. Um, so for this bottom mechanism then, to go to the page. Now let's do, a, let's do a top view. We have our conveyor belt. We have our bottom roller. That's the thing on either side to make sure it stays in line. Oh, this, so this pipe will go out further. Um, this is the half inch, oh, uh, shoot. Uh, bah, let's go this side. So there's our barriers. Um, so then we have our half inch pipe that comes out. Let's pretend this is the uh, top of the lift and this is the bottom. This marble's coming this way. Um, okay, so we have our thing here. Now, this is where our gearbox is at, and then we'll go this way, and we'll go to our motor. This is a motor gearbox. Now, in the United States, we use the Imperial system, which is fine. The only issue is no one else uses Imperial. Everyone else uses metric. 
That makes it a little difficult because when you order parts, there are things that come in Imperial and there's things that come only in metric. Um, and so this gearbox that I have is metric and my motor is Imperial. My motor has a half inch shaft that sticks out of it. So the input for here is 11 millimeters, which is a little bit less than a half inch. And then the output here is 14 millimeters, which is a little less than five eighths of an inch. Um, however, you can't use five eighths inch and half inch in these things because that doesn't fit. <laughs> so I, um, I am employing my father-in-law who does a lot of metalworking to basically mill down or lathe down some, uh, some metal rods and some parts to basically make adapters. So that way I can fit half inch um, into this thing, both the input and output. So um, that's what makes this tricky. Imperial. When I'm doing the connections all here, so I have my half inch shaft that comes out. I'll adapt it into my 11 millimeters and going into the gearbox. And then when it comes out, it's 14. And I'm gonna adapt that back into a half inch. So we have half inch going to 11 millimeters that goes to 14 millimeters that goes back to half inch as it goes back to half inch. And then all the, all of my um, rollers here will be half inch um, because that's the size of my, um, the bearings that I have. I'm thinking, I have it measuring tape. 16 inches wide is really wide. That almost, that's probably too wide. You can try 16 inches. 14? Let's do, hmm. Let's do 14. 16 would just be insane. Yeah, let's do 14. Okay, so it's decided. The neoprene will be 14 inches. So as the marbles come into this thing, I'll create some kind of, so this will be, this will be locked in. Some some length of this, probably like a good two feet, maybe maybe more, maybe eh, two feet is probably good. Two feet will be locked in. Um, and if the marbles are coming from, let's say the, the marble machine is here, they go up to the top, pop off, they go down here, and they loop back around to the bottom. Well, they could have some, they could have some speed, and I don't want them just like, banging into the lift here. So I think I'm gonna add some kind of array of nails to slow them down. So they kind of go into like a little Plinko thing. So they will dunk, 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 kind of slow down before they get to this thing. That way they're not like crashing into it. So I'll add those nails. Um, there'll obviously be a barrier on either side. At the top, as they drop off, I don't want them to make much noise. So I think I'm gonna use maybe some like, so this is cork. This is the same cork I used for the cork board stuff inside my office. I think I might use this. So if I have this at like an angle, the marbles will hit it. They won't really make any noise as they hit this thing, hopefully. A lot less, a lot less noise hitting this um, than they would hitting just like a wood thing. So I'll have that. So the cork will be at the top to land on. Yeah, I'll have them go, I'll probably have them go up like a little, just a short section. Cause then I'll, however I want to connect them to the marble machine, I'll do per each marble machine. It'll just be a step down to wherever they go. I don't want this to be super long, but it needs to be, have some length to it. So let's see where we're at. Let's see, how high do I want this thing? Probably want it. Well, let's see. Five feet is probably the max. Anything higher than that is kind of silly. So let's say this is five feet. Um, we're obviously limited by this motor is here. This is probably here.
the bottom roller is probably at like, I'll have to raise this up a bit. I don't know, seven inches? Let's just say seven. Seven sounds good. So where's our roller? This is at, let's see, this is at seven. That'll give plenty of clearance for the, the four inch roller thing and our shelves to go loop around. Um, now this doesn't need to be, t this length right here doesn't need to be terribly long. So, I mean enough for it to like loop around and for them to go up and not get caught. Maybe like, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, hang on. So the, um, this roller can be up higher because the marbles will go on at whatever height that I set it at. So this, this can be up higher. This has to be at, a, this, you know, I want this low because I don't want, I want there to be ample altitude. So that could be at like, four, let's put that at 14. So the entrance is 14 inches and then this could be higher. 14, say 18. Let's put that at 18. So that gives me, use that. So there's 11 inches between this roller and that roller. This is like the distance. Maybe we'll go 20. Let's go to 20. Okay, 20. So at 20, then it'll go that way. So then between this guy and this guy, what's, what's five, three, math is hard. Uh, 60, so it's, so we have a 40 inch height for that to go. 40 inch vertical from there to there. And then how, how long do I want this thing to be is the, is, it's tricky, so like this length. Three feet, four feet, four feet max. Let's try four feet. That way it's not like, it'll be kind of boxy, but, uh, oh, mm, let's see, 40 inches. And it kind of goes with a 45 degree angle, that's all right. Yeah, let's do that. Four feet long. Five feet high, I mean, they'll probably be a little more than four feet because of the entrance and then the exit. Six and a half feet long in total. That's good, that'll work. This is it, this is kind of, I mean, this looks kind of messy, but if you follow it along, this kind of works through it. So in terms of the materials, I already have my neoprene for the uh, conveyor belt. I have 14 feet of it and it's an eighth of an inch thick and it is 36 inches wide. So it's a lot, I have a lot of neoprene to work with, which is good. I do need some two by fours. I'll need what, one, two. So this is, this is this frame here um, is basically gonna be doubled. So whatever I do on one side, I'll do, I'll, I'll double it on the other side. Um, so I need what, one, two, three, four. I need five two by fours. I need some four inch PVC. This is my materials list. I need some metal plates for this. I'm gonna need a lot of metal plates. So let's see, if this is, if this is three quarters, this is probably another inch. I need like two inch plates. Two inches by 14, I need a lot of them. I'll have to figure that out how I'm gonna do that. I might have to get bigger sheets and then cut them. And then I need a bunch of, three quarter sticks for this part. And then oh, I need so four inch PVC. I have extra wood for those roller guides. I need some metal bar, half inch metal bars, uh, metal tubes for the rollers. Um, I have my rivets. I'm gonna do some tests before I get more rivets. I probably have plywood for the face here. Is that everything? That might be everything. At least for now. So anyway, that's, um, so yeah, that's how I design stuff. I don't know if that was exciting or not, but um, that's, that's how I get to where I'm at. That's how I come up with the ideas that I'm gonna build. There's probably gonna be a lot of problems along the way with the things that, you know, I'll, I'll run into a bunch of problems that I'll have to troubleshoot and work through. And I don't know, if you have any ideas for this, shoot them out because uh, uh, 
I'm open to suggestions. Uh, if you've worked with conveyor belts or um, have connected anything to neoprene before or have a better way to, to connect something to the conveyor belt, um, let me know. Um, hopefully, hopefully I can get this thing to work because um, that's, the, that's the big goal. Once I get this thing to work, then um, uh, I can start building a bunch of marble machines because then I will have this permanent, durable, um, heavy duty kind of lift thing that will, it'll just be a plug and play. I'll plug it into the next marble machine as I, you know, so I can build more. You know, the next step of the process is just, just to gather materials and kind of get everything, everything together and I'll start, or I'll start assembling it. Um, so, oh, one more thing, the neoprene. So uh, I have a long strip of it and I'm going to obviously cut a long strip and then I have to connect it to make my, my band. Um, and I'm thinking I'm gonna use, al gotta add to the list, alligator clips. Alligator clips, or some kind of like, some kind of like thing that you hammer in to the neoprene. That way, um, it connects to each other. Uh, so, there. Okay. Now I think I have everything. Uh, if there's anything else that I'm missing, or that you have any ideas you want to throw them out, feel free. Um, but okay, that's it for now. See ya. Check this out. Hans is over there, running past block. Ready? Let's see what Hansel does. <laughs> you gotta work on your blocking, bro. You just let him blow right by you. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Okay, drop it. Thank you. Ready? Ready? 